Blockstream 1 focuses on firm performance and how they adapt to incentives and regulation. And I suppose in the context of South Africa's poor economic environment, low growth, high levels of unemployment. It looks at how certain policy interventions, whether it be some tax policy, labor market interventions, industrial policy, and whether those policies are actually working towards creating employment and growth and investment. And in, in terms of the recommendations that have come out, we can figure out where these policy interventions are lacking and where we need to design them better, and also new policy interventions that are required. I think one of the, the big findings from the research relates to globalization and the fragmentation of production networks. And, and really what we see in South Africa is it has led to a substitution of intermediate inputs produced onshore with inputs. So what this has really led to is an early deindustrialization process. And one of the key findings from this kind of body of research is that especially the Chinese import penetration has been found to be highly negatively associated with employment growth, with sales growth, with firm survival rates, any of the metrics that we would be interested in. But on the plus side, on the positive side, investing in innovation and building capabilities can offset that negative impact of the Chinese import competition. So what we need is complementary policy measures that go alongside the actual furtherance of R&D investment. That can be done in numerous ways, but what we need is a consolidated, broader industry uh, policy that makes sure that we take into account the externalities of a given policy on different sectors. There is significant what we call misallocation of capital in uh, South Africa. Some uh, parts of the research also showed this. And here the policy recommendation is much more clear. We need a stronger focus on reallocating capital to more medium-sized, smaller firms and away from dominating firms, for example, in mining and, in, and utilities. The largest 10% of firms, they account for 98% of the estimated tax loss in South Africa. So the bigger firms are basically the best at avoiding taxes that should go to the benefit of the majority of the population. And this needs to be fixed. We need what we call an easy build system that flags firms that divert from the sole called arm's length pricing principle in taxation. And we have seen other countries around the globe being successful in pursuing that strategy. South Africa could gain from this and avoid tax avoidance by the larger firms.